it can come into. So uh, let's see that. I just want to appreciate everyone coming so far from so far and stuff to gather. And I hope uh, if you don't feel like you got it much out of it, that uh, probably will feel somewhere down the line that you have. Yes. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. <laughs> yeah, just just don't return it. Don't let the warranty expire. <laughs> See what happens. You always get a refund of your misery, for sure. <laughs> you can go back to that when you leave. So, uh, again, I remember when I first heard Saf say, it was, uh, I don't know how, but it was, someone told me about this lady, Neelam from uh, Eastern Europe, who was given Saf saying in Berkeley in a park, uh, Berkeley, California. Gangaji? Gangaji? Hmm? No, no, not Gangaji. Neelam. Mm. Neelam. I saw Gangaji later on. But Neelam. And uh, it was just a couple of people there, and she's very soft-spoken. I couldn't hear anything, but it didn't matter. Yeah, there was a feeling going on. Then I came back the next week, and they had it inside at someone's house. I still couldn't hear her much. She was very mm -hmm. spoke very s slowly and not. You know, just not wasn't the understanding that was coming out of her wasn't fucking profound or not. It was, but the energy was something that had me coming back. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have any more chairs? Or Whatever. Yeah. So I, yeah. Come on. Come on out. Honey. You want to sit there? There's that chair there. Just bring it to the front if you oh, like. It's okay. It's okay. All right. So, uh, you know, it's just the energy that brought me back and then I uh, I heard another thing and uh, it's, that was when the unspoken yes sort of occurred just felt it in the gut and I felt it was like knowing before knowledge something I don't know but I had never been that close to a root on anything really it's always hanging off a limb or something and uh just continued, read a couple books. First one I read was Who Cares by Ramesh Balsakar, which I like the title, Who Cares? In New York, it would have been Who the Fuck Cares? But who, cares? who Cares? And uh, he started out with these strange improbable probabilities, I think I remember, yet on, in statistics, sort of like statistics about uh, deaths in the UK by murder. And it would have like 10 years of deaths of by murder in murder in UK, and they'd all be the same percentage every year, like 3.2. It was just weird things he was saying. And he was trying to get across that it looks like this chaos, but there's a pattern in everything. Yeah? <laughs> and it reminded me of a movie. Have you ever see the movie Magnolia? I think it's Magnolia, where the there's a family and they're fighting all the time and there's there's a brother and a father in some you know apartment building and the son is sitting in his on his bed a teenage son seeming pretty uh not feeling well you know like this and then the mother always the mother and father would always argue and then one of them would pick up pick up this empty shotgun and threaten the other one with it and in this case the kid decides to go uh, mm -hmm. up and jump off the roof and kill himself. And as he's passing the window of the apartment, the, the mother sh oh, fires yeah. a shotgun and it was loaded and it kills the kid before he hits the ground. Oh, wow. Yeah, and that's, yeah. that's why it reminded, he didn't have that in the book, but that's why it reminded me of it. <coughs> how could it, how could, who could perform that choreography? We can't even get the shuttle together <laughs> to have that kind of thing happen. Excellent There's something time. running the show that's just <laughs> magnificent in a weird way. Yes. yes. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine if you jumped off to kill yourself and then a bullet came through a window and killed you <laughs> on the way down? You, you were ready to meet your maker on the pavement you and you get shot before. What? Would you go to purgatory or hell then? Oh, uh, yeah. It's, uh, and, uh, Bargo. So it has this whole Bargo. thing about. Uh, this who cares and uh i don't know it's 
his ideas stopped me when I was reading and I just stopped for a while. And then because it was almost as if he was turning around a car that I had always been driving in one direction. It was just, and I was looking and it was informing me that I had been looking through the back window and calling it the windshield. So I was basically driving backwards, so to speak, in this life. And it kept happening. And uh, that set off. Actually, I got motivated to go to India to see this guy, Ramesh, because he was 85. And I figured he wasn't going to live that long. So I thought I wanted to tell the guy I was grateful for this book. It really had a profound effect on me. And uh, so I went to see him and sat with him for like, a couple of weeks and then went down to see where Ramana Maharshi lived. And, you know, it's your anomaly. And then went back and saw Ramesh again. And uh, things, you know, things happen. You would be sitting there and then you knew you were never going to ask another question because you had gotten the futility of searching or reaching for something that's right here and now. You know, you it will bring you there. It's going to bring what we're entertaining and is a dead end. You're going to get there before uh, you would if you're meandering around through this, the understanding of non-duality. It's going to bring you to a point where you may have had to live a lot to get to. It's going to save you a lot of time and space because if it's fu seemingly futile now, the, the hope of the mental state is that if it only manages better, it won't be later, but it's true. It's futility. You can't arrive at where you already are. So it's best to jump off now. Yes. And this is what happened. I remember I was reading a magazine, very nice one called Tricycle, very nicely colored and illuminated and interesting stories and, you know, teaching of the Buddhist variety. And there was an a, a opinion. Can you hear me, Chris? Yeah. yeah. So there was an opinion piece, and the opinion piece was written by a famous Western meditation teacher who they, I didn't, they didn't name the person. And he said he'd been experiencing a lot of phenomena with all his old students, which is they were getting in touch with them and said, nothing happened. Nothing's happened. <laughs> now, I had the ears to, ears to hear that in a way that. I pulled the emergency brake on the <laughs> spiritual bus because I wasn't going to do, I wasn't even close to 20, 30 years of constant meditation. And they saved me a lot of fucking time. Yeah. yeah so I got just, that was it. Canceled that subscription and just uh, my pants that I was always trying to pull up, my spiritual pants, I let it fall down. And just fucking some, for some reason, it was given up. And then things, uh, became clearer and clearer and i realized i could see mind and describe it and when i heard descriptions of mind from teachers like ramana i it it coincided with a feeling i had already had about what and then they defined it in a way that you could talk around yeah because it's difficult to describe a feeling in a way but you can describe the principle of a feeling and so, and that was the biggest one was this movement of the mental state to claim the experience that we are in, which is conscious contact. You know? The consciousness triggers the dreaming. The dreaming isn't coincided with a, someone who's conscious. The consciousness is the triggering of the dreaming. You contact things that are appearing to be real. And that contact is brought back and is used to inform us of something. Yet we didn't know, and things like the Course of Miracles point out, that that which is informing us of something is informing it as it's the brain informing uh, to the body. So we now are starting from a position that we've been tagged already as a body. It isn't like, oh, you can become a body, you already are one. And then we start with that mantle, which is quite heavy, and we're trying to squirm out of a lot of it, really. Just like you all, everyone wants to get in the shade because the, when the body gets hot, it's uncomfortable. Yes, and then the more, the, all that fucking activity in the head. Yeah. 
So this whole idea of non-duality is a negation of the basic premise that rules this interpretation. Yeah, And so a great master that I feel is great, Oang Po, he said, whatever can be perceived cannot be perceiving. Quite simple. Yeah, so I'm perceiving, 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 perceiving. You're not that which is perceived. You're not the perceived. Yeah. The perceived, I mean, is not the what's perceiving. And the vice, the same thing to me. So basically, we're off the table right there. It's beautiful. And then go with that, with the head, and listen to a few minutes of the narrative. And the narrative is based on the exact opposite. What is, what can be perceived is what's perceiving. And the language just constantly repeats that. It's like a chanting that we're doing. You know, people actually chant. Well, then we're in a chanting form in the head all day. It's a, I, me, my, basically. And so the I and the me and the my are all represented as a body. Yeah. And the mental state can fixate on that body to reinforce the idea, really not of being a body, but of being the doer, the thinker, the feeler, and the taster, the toucher, and then attributing it to the body so it can be remembered. Yeah. You cannot remember everything you supposedly did, but you remember everything you did as a doer. Yeah. You can't remember everything you've heard, but you remember everything you heard as a hearer. <laughs> You see, the, econ the economics of the heist is incredible. There's every time there's a doing, you'll probably forget a lot of the doing, but you don't forget the doer. And therefore you see the real, what the value the head puts on the doing is only to attribute it to the doer. Because the doer is what's constantly remembered. The doing isn't. The hearer is what's constantly rem remembered the hearing isn't. The seeing is constantly remembered. You know, it's claimed that the seer is constantly remembered and the seeing isn't. Yeah. What more do you need to know? Just get an idea of the failure of the system that you're relying on. It's not a you, but it's hard to say in the other way. There's a reliance on a failed system. And basically, the failedness of the system is producing effects that you call yours. So whatever disease the system is causing, you believe you're the cause of the disease, yeah? When it says it's afraid, you say you're afraid. When it says it's disconnected, which it always is, you say you're disconnected, yeah? There's an identification as something that we're not. It's just that simple. And there can be a little more freedom from it than doing whatever or whatever or whatever, drinking, doing that. They're all fine and dandy, smoking, everything else. But there's another relief from it that doesn't uh, have to be uh, associated with an activity. You can just have a relief from it. Yeah? And then what activities you do won't be that important to you anyway. They won't really. Yeah? You'll be able to learn also. So this is a message simple. I heard it from there. Then we made a fatal mistake. We put out a website. Because knowing it or not, I remember I would be doing talks in AA. And then one night we were doing a talk with AA people and people from the Course of Miracles were nearby. And they came up to me and said, how long have you been involved in the Course of Miracles? I said, this second, because I never heard it before. And they said, you should come see this person. And I said, all right. And I went to see this, these people, of course, the miracles. Again, I could see what they were saying, sort of was capturing how I was sensing things. And therefore, I was introduced to the Course of Miracles. So I read some of it. I didn't do all the lessons. And uh, the group I was involved with, they said it's really important to do the first 20 lessons, no matter what. So they had a little booklet, and I did the first 20 lessons. When I did the second lesson, you and I give everything all the meaning it has. It's just... I've always seen it that way. They would say, look at the room casually and say, you are giving everything. As soon as I did it, there would be a pause before I saw the chair and there would be nothing. And then I, then the chair would be named. Or I looked at the window, there'd be no, nothing. And, oh, window. I could see 
what they were trying to get across every time. Mm -hmm. And then when I went to see this group in Wisconsin, I was walking by the room and what lesson were they talking about lesson two? You were giving everything all the meaning has triggered the exact same thing every time to this day, mm -hmm. because I would see nothing and then the chair would appear. Yeah. And so I got, had the, they said, all right, this is what's happening. That understanding framed what was happening. And what I found out was, this is what's happening. <laughs> so what they said was what was happening. It was great. It really was. Yeah. And I didn't need that much more after that. I didn't. Then I ran into that one page, which I've been using for 20 years, 456 or something, because it's the most beautiful negation uh, in the concise surgical manner that the Course in Miracles has. The Course of Miracles sometimes is very concise and surgical. It's describing something I feel incredibly perfectly. And that thing I always read is exactly how I feel about it. It says there's a firm in faith and there's something else that has been made to be yourself. And then in the act of denial of what you are. And it says exactly you're relying on the seas that can't see it, that only see the world, and, da, 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 and you're not that. Da, da, da. They all sit in it. It just, it was a, that's why when I say it, it rings with such certainty. I figure it's got to infect others because that's why I keep saying it. I always fall back to that because I have <coughs> such a feeling of avalanche like sense when I read that. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it gets across. Because it's not the reading, it's what the, the reaction to the reading is. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. So, and then AA was unbelievably revealed because when I saw self as other, this thing that we talk about, some people like to call it an ego, but as you can use a simple example to dissuade yourself from the ego idea. Isn't there a feeling of the one who has an ego and the one that wants to lose an ego? That's what we're talking about, that sense of ownership of things. So it's not ego, it's the sense of self. And the self of sense of self is ownership, doership. Yeah? It's and it affects it. And in the duality, you hope that you have ownership or you relinquish ownership. So you have an ego or you lose an ego. I don't like the term ego. Because to me, it's an objectification by the mental state of itself. It's sort of like Dracula describing vampires. So they look just like this, which is seemingly opposite of how Dracula looks. Oh, guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a perfect description. Go ahead and find the vampires. Yes, yeah. So it's not, it's, it, there's, there's a singularity that's the axis of the having and not having. Have an ego, not have an ego. That's the sense of self. Sense of self is that which is there in both swings of duality. You're connected, you're disconnected. But there's only one that's representing those two movements. That's the sense of self. That's the bondage of self in the in the that pendulum of duality. It's the bondage of self. You're not only taken into an idea of disconnection, you're taken into an idea of connection, which makes it worse when you feel like you're disconnected because now you've lost and you'll be seen as you did something to lose the connection and it makes it this disconnection worse and it drives more seeking to get connected and so on and so forth. And all of these bringing is just, just reinforcing that one note of you. Yeah. Yeah. So you start seeing shit and you can only be seeing it from before it. Truly, you can only see this the problem from the, the solution. You can't see the problem in the problem. That's part of it. Part of the problem is you can't see it. You see it from the solution. Yeah. And the solution cannot be in time. Because any solution in time can be covered up by the speediness of the process of self. I just do not see any technique is going to get you before the self. Yeah, any drug, anything like that. I don't, I just not as I'm not on a dog shit level, you know, day to day, four wheel drive, uh, fucking travel writer. <clears throat> yeah, because 
without the knowledge of how self arises, it's going to arise after the greatest peak event. As long as you're still alive, it will be active. Yeah. So if you think you got whacked, it's going to say it got whacked. Yeah? And I've seen some heavy duty whackers, people who did a lot of stuff, and they came to our talks, and this was a missing ingredient. From all their trips, they came out as being the one who had the trip. Almost like going into a spiritual car wash and the thing you want to get rinsed off doesn't get rinsed off. And it seems to be able to withstand the most powerful fucking car wash. When you pull out, you still have that fucking thing that you pulled in with. Yeah. Barnacles. Yes. Imaginary barnacle. So this worked for me. That's why I stuck with it. I would have been a circuit speaker in AA. I would have had a career. <laughs> but my career is to be, is to have everyone leave. It's not a good career plan. Yeah. <laughs> my career is for me to be truly successful. <laughs> you all go. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a bad, bad career move. I was such a, I was an up and coming star in AA. It just, just crashed. Yes, I never get invited anywhere in AA. No one where I live, no one in AA comes. I never, I'll never see him. It's my bugger. Where I think it's the, humbly, I think it's the clearest description of the problem, but they don't seem to. I'm, it must be me, really, because it's very easy to hide the message by and to, concentrating on the messenger yeah that's why we're clear about putting out that this has nothing to do with the messenger it's the message yes yeah yeah paul will always fail you just like jeff and lynn and lisa have to fail you so that you get released from that dependency on something that's not dependent and fall into what you are yeah it has to fail you all saviors have to fail you you're never going to, because you, you're, you don't need to be saved. Yeah. Yeah. Those things just, they extend the, the, the dissolute, you know, the delusion and shit. They extend it because you're going to probably get pissed off at the Lord of the universe. Yeah. You know, so just happy to be here. Happy we made it so far through this uh, incredible, torturous <laughs> <laughs> fucking puzzle of elevators and fucking pushing the wrong thing and then the mobile sauna with the <laughs> going down the tram it, it seemed to get slower every fucking day uh, there's no air it's, every meager desire got just muffled by distance and altitude fucking I love to go to the beach, but I don't want to go on that tram. Go walk that, that, that alien launching pad tunnel. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Just, just wanted to roll out of bed and roll to the beach. But hey, whatever. I found a lot of, it's a lot of joy in it also. It's nice to be frustrated. Yes. Because you see the little thing come out of the woods, out of the weeds. Yeah. Yeah, this is the perfect reminder of what yes. you're not, is the perfect reminder of what you are with this understanding. Instead of reinforcing what you're not, it now is used to reinforce that you're not that. So all these activities that were meant to reinforce that you are something you're not can be switched over to, to uh, be reinforced that you're not that. Yeah. If people always say, I wish I had a constant reminder, well, there it is. Your own head is the constant reminder of what you're not. It is. It is. There you go. What more, more do you want? That's sort of like love's greatest grit gift is what used to really irritate you. It's just the greatest gift because you need, if, you need, if you feel like you can forget, there's the reminder. Because it's not AI. It's not growing in awareness. It's programmed. The same thing you were listening to 20 years ago hasn't changed much. It hasn't. If you look at people who wrote right journals, it's the same beginning. Usually I'm afraid of this. And then 1973, I'm afraid of that 1993. 
It's the same thing, basically. It doesn't have, because it's worked, it doesn't, it hasn't really grown in expertise. So now you see it as what you're not. And in a weird way here, I think it's the only way to go about around it. Because you are what you're looking for, so you, you can't see it. Yeah? You are what you're looking for, so you can't feel it. You are what you're looking for, so you can't taste it. You are what you're looking for, so you can't smell it. Yeah? How are you going to get a sense of it in this place? Well, you get a sense of what you are by seeing what you're not. That's it. Yeah. By seeing what you're not, the selfing activity, because when you see what you're not, you're seeing the space that this idea used to fill up with a picture of a body. You see the space of it. Yeah. So in a way, you're finally seeing what you are by seeing what you're not. Yeah. Yeah. The best, it's sort of, the best you can get is an intimation of what you are here. You get whiffs of it. You feel it. There's a sense of it. Yeah. But there's no meeting what you are. You can't. You're already it. Yeah. You can't have an experience of it. You'd have to be something else from it. Yeah. You can't have it here because then you would lose it. It's just, it doesn't play that game. The before we're talking about doesn't have a complementary after. It's before. It's before this and that. It's before high and low. It's before connected, disconnected. Yeah, nothing, all those little figure eight skates don't leave a mark on it. Yeah? yeah. I find it to be the greatest reliability. It allows you to see security and unsureness, insecurity. Yeah. You have a certain certainty in a world that's not certain. Fucking incredible. And it's truly like what Jesus says. You're in this world, but you're not of it. Yeah, you're in it, but you're not of it. And that, to me, is a beautiful negation. Yeah? It describes something that you can feel because you've been going through it, and then it negates it. Instead of trying to say, you're not of this world, and then trying to argue and feel, I'm not of this world, I'm not of this, while you're seemingly in the world. Well, it's just a description of the world and then hitting it with you're not of it yeah this is what exactly we do here we describe the head and then we put the little message out and you're not that because you can be very clear you'll become clearer and clearer about what you're not when you take its stealth off of it which is it's about you because a lot about you you don't want to know as a you there's a lot of hiding and putting it off and da 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 because it would be unbearable for you to know the aspects of you. But when it's not you, you can see a whole lot more of it. Yeah. And come to the point and let the fraudulent feeling land and your assholeness land and the selfishness land and let it do its thing because you think it's going to kill you. The head thinks it's going to kill it. And you see it doesn't kill you because you're not the fucking head. Yeah. And then it goes, I'm not that, I'm not that, I'm not that. You finally let all that, you're not land. I'm that and feel it. And then I'm not that in a negating way. Not I'm not that in a denial way. Yes? Yeah. A negating way. It's different. It's a different feeling. And therefore, you're on, once it rings the bell, it's, it's going to inform you. You're on to something. Just fucking attend those... Uh, masses so to speak when they <laughs> ring the bell it's just going to keep ringing and that which you hope to <sighs> books may assist videos may assist but the sense feltness is the convincing yeah you have all the evidence in the world right where you're sitting to see what you're not, to see the futility of seeking, to see the futility of trying to grasp what's ungraspable. Yeah? You can see it and you can come to terms with it because this understanding describes exactly the misunderstandings that we're living from. When that house collapses, you get caught by something much more foundational, much more assured. Yeah? Yeah.
that story you told about the 91 year old guy going to another person to ask if they're enlightened. See, if you had the greatest master that ever lived and, and you said you would do anything if you could talk to him and then he appeared and told you, son, there's nothing ever to do. There's nothing to do. You would go to your real master, the head, in about 15 minutes and start doing something. Yes, you would. You would go to the real master. Yeah. So, yeah. That's it for me today. I hope... Uh, You can sense certainty. Certainty is felt, felt, and there's what only has to be one of us knuckleheads in this space that be certain about certain things, and it will resonate with the certainty we all are that we're uncertain about. Yeah, yeah. So no matter how much uncertainty you have here, there's a certain place in every one of us, and let's call it the you know the gut bell. That bell will ring. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't. You don't need a massive amount of certainty. It's contagious. It is. It's talk and look at how we were infected here by all these fucking viruses. You don't think certainty has the ability to infect? Fucking so much more powerful. Yeah, much more powerful. Much, much more. Yeah, so being convinced. Uh, there's another space after being convinced. Yeah, that's the sp that's the intimate space you're going to roll in after you're being after being convinced. Yeah, yeah. There's no need to try to describe it. It's better to have you see it and feel it and roll around in it, and it will, you'll come to your seemingly own terms about it, based on they're not your own term. Much more, you know. You won't have to have 80 books in your library to assure you, unless you like books. You'll just have a, an assuredness. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I was thinking of giving some people here the certificate of awakening. But I don't think you need a certificate. So I decided that. And then none of you really reached the level that had to be reached to be get the certificate. But let's bypass that and just say, there's no need for a certificate of awakening. The t-shirt will do. <laughs> the t-shirt will protect you. Obviously not from infections and disease, but it will it'll protect you from other things. Probably more. But yes, the diseases of the of the mental state, not the mind. I don't like I like big mind. Yeah. That's why I like to call them mental processes. They're not of mind. They don't they don't have that the characteristics of mind. They're more like industrial, you know, synthetic. Like if you take an herbal thing and then a synthetic thing, uh, they may be the same ingredient, but one's been through a process. It's not, I don't know. Yeah. With drugs, it used to be cocaine had a certain flavor and then speed was like industrial. Just never liked speed. Yeah. Just didn't have a feel, whereas cocaine had a certain feminine feel to me. Speed was just like fucking crank, as is what they called it. Just uh, you know, didn't like it at all. So, yeah, I hope the flavor has uh, become contagious with all of us. Yes, I know a few bound to right now. Yeah, so any questions, might as well ask if you have any. Any golden oldies you want me to visit? On? Yeah. How about knocking on heaven's door? No. Remember knocking on heaven's door? We got that one. I don't know what the old, the others are. There's tons of them. They all came up with in an attempt to communicate something. No. Every one of them was squeezed out of an attempt to communicate something. Every little parable or right, you know, thing was just some urge to try to get something across and the greatest form of communicating is imagery yeah so you're using you're trying to use imagery and i'm gonna go to the knocking on heaven's door 
this is one of my older ones. So they're yeah, not mine, but knocking on heaven's door. So a guy, have you heard this one? Oh, great, great. Knocking on heaven's door is obviously someone's been looking for it for quite a while. And he finally finds it. And he knocks on the door. And then the door opens immediately. There's God, which causes him a little uncomfortability. This looked like God was just right behind the door. And he looks at God and says, God, can I come in? And he thinks he's been doing good and a lot of service. And God looks at him and goes, uh, Paul, you can't come in. Yeah. And so now Paul gets a little disappointed and he practices more. He goes to a couple of different continents, Tibet. Now, the, 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 the rave or the vogueness is South America, go to the shamans and everything like that. Feels like he's got a good resume, knocks on the door. Pretty confident he's going to get in. You know, he's just going through the formality. Knocks on the door. The op door opens again, very dis discomforting. It's right there, God. And goes, God, can I come in? And he starts, and God looks at him and says, Paul, can't come in. So now, <laughs> Paul gets pissed off. And he just says, fuck this shit. I'm going to get loaded. So it's fornicating and everything. And he gets drunk and he falls into the river. And he gets washed up on the shore right next to heaven's door. And as he's standing up, something whacks him. He knocks on the door. The door opens quickly. And he looks at God and he says, can I come in? And God says, Paul can't come in. And he walks straight in. Because he finally realized he wasn't Paul. Yeah, you see? The identification as Paul was, he wasn't permitting himself to go to heaven. It wasn't God. God was just stating a fact. Paul can't come to heaven. Can't come in. Because there's no Paul. As soon as you realize he wasn't Paul, walk right in. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, this is like the message, really. And that which is, let's say, resisting the message is finite and the message is infinite. So there's no losing. There's no losing. Yeah. The finite cannot outweigh the infinite. It's, it's a done deal. Yeah. Yeah. So we should be happy and sack, you know, the uh, really good news. Really good news. You are what you're looking for. The seeker and the sought, the seeker is the sought, compresses time and space, ends that little delusion. Yeah. Can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. So what warning, what that warning, who or what would that be given to other than the Buddha? If someone came here and said, with all these different people said, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. It's talking to the Buddha, obviously. Not talking to Mia or Maria. It's seeing the Buddha through Mia and and. Uh, Maria, yes? And it's talking directly to the Buddha because it knows it's pointless to talk to the intermediary, trying to convince Mia to stop searching for the Buddha because Mia has been a Buddhist for 30 years and shit like that. But M Mia is the Buddha in this view. And you can, so the Buddha cannot use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. Yeah, there you go. Mind, big M mind, cannot use mind to seek mind. This is the whole principle of non-duality, that you are mind, you are Buddha, you are light. And not seeing that, you are using Buddha, mind, and light to look for, in some of our cases, Buddha, mind, and light. If that too fits, wear it, and things are going to change. Yeah, you'll probably start losing interest in looking for the Buddha because... Uh, I hope you have your own answer for that. Yeah, you'll lose interest in looking for mind, especially with mind, and you'll definitely lose interest in looking for light with light. You just kind of, I mean, the logicness is so uh, completely collapsing of the mirage in our head. It's just. Uh, Puts it in, it puts it to an end quickly, never to be picked up again. I've never looked for what can't be found again, ever, since I got it. It's not got it, but I heard it. And it brought me to points of being convinced 
And then there's a whole field of living after in this time space of after being convinced what's how does it look well it looks like a lot of shit uh the curtain has been pulled down on yeah and there's no interest or you're not waiting for a new show it's just over and now you're incessantly here because you can't be anywhere else and it's very clear you were attempting to escape from an imaginary place as an imaginary thing and you're very clear about all that, and shit has been put to a stop. Yeah. And like Vlad said, you start seeing the extraordinary in the ordinary because your camera isn't constantly moving for a bigger, better thing. We're here now, really reacting or responding to what's here now. Yeah. It works. It's brought about a you know, I travel lighter through this whole fucking event. Yes, getting sick and uh, 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 seeing people get sick. Uh, 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 so sick. Then I'm going, my head's going, well, you don't get sick at home. The last two times you've been sick, I've been at retreats. <laughs> well, cancel <laughs> retreats and you won't get sick. And on and on, just listen to it. And the smallness of it. And, you know, seriously, if the sense of timelessness becomes a norm, you'll see how long it takes for the time processes to appear. It's like an eternity sometimes. You're in a space and then suddenly it seems like it's moving slow. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> it looks really weird. It does. Because you're, you're not moving at all. And it's, uh, it's, it used to, it really gets away with a lot of shit with quickness. And it's like in molasses now. Yeah, you're going to be fucked if you don't do this. Do not disobey me. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> time, of course, is constructed, yes. So something that happens quickly can be seen very slowly. Yeah, you can. From eternity, what's quick in time isn't quick. It's super slow, right? So you can see it. You can see it. You can see the activity I'm describing. You can. You're, uh, if there can be, be an awareness of it here, there can be awareness of it there. It's just, it's just a fact. There's no... We're not starting from uh, uh, a lack of awareness. It's not like a race here. Yeah. We're, you know, it's not like everyone's starting from a different, it has a better, uh, the handicap is better for this person to win. There's no different starting points in awareness. <laughs> awareness isn't like, oh, I'm, the fourth lane of awareness is uh, <laughs> getting ready. Uh, the seventh, wow, it's way back there. It's never going to catch up. One, two, go! You know, it's not, it's not like... <laughs> yeah. If you're looking from everywhere, there's nobody ahead. Yes? There's no ahead in everywhere. There's no somewhere in everywhere. There's only appearances of things. Yeah. You're not less aware or more aware. The ahead is more like a sphincter. It's more, it's got more, it's more closed or more open. And it's describing itself and trying to apply it to awareness. You're not unconscious and you're not unaware. And there's no pure awareness or radical awareness or pure radical awareness. You couldn't change, you couldn't see the difference in awareness because there isn't any. It's just a giant whatever. There's no, oh, here comes some radical awareness. What is he? He's got a different, like a mohawk hair. And, all right, a radical awareness. That's what I want. I want a, a extreme radical. It's not like an outfit you're fucking putting on. It's the quality of all qualities. The non-quality of all qualities. Yeah, I feel, I don't know what it is. It just seems like a giant the whole place is awashed in it, and you can't see any of it. Yeah, so, yeah. 
I'm happy I'm here and uh, I'm happy I'll be going. So, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah. I was reading yesterday early writing, remember Shea saying to his teachers, I do not know what to choose and what to leave behind. And heading home, I'm going into sort of a period of lots of goals that have to be moved around. And I'm trying to, I'd love to hear thoughts on striving for ambition and avoiding self. That's yes, yes. All right. See, you're not the one striving, not the one that's avoiding, not the one's deciding. And decisions and whatever strivings will go on. And you'll just travel lighter. Yeah. So like we say in AA, don't be in the outcome business. Suit up and show up and let go of the results. Yeah. Now, those are, those are not orders that you can uh, do. There are observations that you'll see. You will. When you lose interest in certain things, you're going to see, yeah, that you cannot be in the outcome business. You're going to see that can that there can definitely be striving without a striver, and you can be in a position of directing a lot of people and still be directed. Yeah, yeah. These things aren't these. These are statements that get filled up not by the mental understanding, but by your own seeing. It's going to fill it up with substance, these statements. Yeah. So you've got a lot on your hands when you get home that has some kind of meaning, and you're going to travel lighter through it because you're taking out the heaviest aspect of all the meanings you. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And... The head loves to be sure about shit it has nothing, I, no ideas about. Yeah. yeah. And it has that it has that confirmation bias thing, where it's not studying evidence and arriving at a conclusion. It starts <laughs> at a conclusion and tries to doctor up the evidence right. to support the conclusion. That's what the head does all the time. So you will see that. And when you see it, you may lose interest in it, and it won't take up so much of the space or the or the seat screen as it used to be. And then more of that empty space of the screen become the become the dominant thing. The absence of things will become a dominant influence. So that's what happens. You lose interest and then there's a gaining of interest. And the gaining of interest has the same effect as when you had interest in the other things. Instead of enslaving you, it will enrich your day. It just has sort of sometimes incredibly opposite effects. So one interest and attention going one way enslaves you to what's not happening because you're constantly listening to its takes. And the other one enriches your day. So you're here. Yeah. No matter what. What you said about outcomes were very helpful. Yeah. yeah. Well, that good. comes from AA. Mm -hmm. Because they knew. AA has grown into a lot of wisdom because of 80 years of fucking alcoholics and addicts. Yeah. Going through transformations and seeing that's why one of the, our hum, one of the first principles or suggestions is a day at a time because they know that the head does not dwell in a day at a time. It dwells into many days at all the time. Yeah. So they would just suggest certain things to us because they had a pretty good description of the movement of the disease of alcoholism, which is rooted in the head. Yeah. And if the underlying addiction is to self, this idea of being the self. So they had great suggestions. Yeah. Stay out of the outcome business, just suit up and show up day at a time. Easy does it. This too shall pass all these things because they know exactly what, where the, problem resided and some of its attributes so they learned you talk about herbal concoctions or fucking traditional medicines from let's say new guinea from some plants it's grown in aa it's come out with incredible medicines for the fucking mental addictions it does it's incredible incredible process and uh 
But for the Incredible. staying out of the outcomelessness is also in the Bhagavad Gita. It's one of the main things that oh, Krishna great. said. Well, there you go. He talks about the fruits of that. See, but most alcoholics weren't drinking, reading the Bhagavad Gita. Oh, but I'm either. saying this is, <laughs> I know. this is a much older, oh, a new course. concept. Much oh, older truth than, uh, you know, than the AA movement. I know. I know. <laughs> a lot of it is. <laughs> but uh, most of but the people that I know in AA aren't going to find it in those things. So AA brought it to them. See, this is the beauty of it. The same thing with non-duality. It's being brought in a new way yes. than, let's say, Advaita Vedanta, because Advaita Vedanta is not working for a lot of people's heads because they've gone through a lot of processes and they don't want any more process. Right. Yeah, and they don't, have, they don't think, they don't have the time to commit their whole life to it, or they don't want to. That's so do they, are they, are they now uh, uh, disqualified from an ease and comfort today? No, let's just get down to the basic, condition of us mm -hmm. of being awake yes. what's that and just to, and to and to contrast its value by the opposite this belief that you can be unawake which is a fucking lie you're awake most people most of the day is not to be awake they're not trying to be awake you're trying to be unaware when you have a half a gallon of ice cream it's not to be awake <laughs> when you're watching die hard eight after you knew Die Hard 1 through 7 sucked, is you want to not be awake. It's true. Most people don't want to be awake. What's bothering them is the light's on all the time. They would rather control it. They want to go out to lunch. Yes? So this big, oh, I want, no, you don't. The head doesn't want to be fucking awake. And so it has you believe you're not awake and then plays with you like a cat does with a mouse by watching you try to become awake. When you already are awake, do you think it's threatened by processes? It will sign up. If you had a 50-year plan to get to alignment, you would have fucking tons of people sign up. But if you say it's readily available now, no. Yeah. Nobody <laughs> wants any of that. But if I can prove to myself who I'm not, that I, I deserve to be there, then I'm ready to, I'm ready to go, go through through lifetimes because of course you're never going to arrive at where you are <laughs> the head will loves to become shit it doesn't want to be something other than what it's saying it is and you know you can think you're going to make it your fucking service animal or your compatriot or your amigo it's it's got a nature that you don't know, understand it's a parasitical nature yeah it has its moment and it can use your life and it's doing it quite well by convincing you it's you. Pretty good. And they'll talk a good game when the push comes to shove. Just like I had an example. My mom would always complain to my older kids because I was out to lunch. I was already worthless. I wasn't going to show up for anyone or anything. So they would always talk up to my other siblings about wanting to go to Hawaii. And she wanted them to buy her a ticket for a wife for Christmas. Yeah. Year after year. And when they didn't buy it, you'd hear it. You know, oh, I really wanted to go. Okay. So one year they bought the ticket. Did she go? No. No. She didn't want to go to Hawaii. She wanted to complain about not going to Hawaii. She had no, had no interest in going to Hawaii. She just wanted to make them feel bad about not going to it's, and that's not my mother. That that's the head. Of it course, it's the head. It's this is how it is. So, oh, I'd do anything to be free. No, you wouldn't. You fucking wouldn't do half the shit. Yeah, because you're already free. We're not asking. Oh, man, forget it. I could go on forever. In AA, they have a thing. Are you willing to go to any length? You know what? One Any length can be no length. This is the one the head fears the most. It has a field day with any length. Oh, you mean I'm going to have to go so fucking far? Any length can mean no length. This is the unbearability of the head. How could I possibly be all that I've been talking about if I'm not which is now? So it's not, you're, you're not, it's, it has a different nature than we have. It doesn't, 
what it reveals isn't its underlying determination. It's a magic trick. It's it's voracious for attention and interest. And it's you're seen as the power, the battery, the generator. So it wants to convince you to do what it says so it can make a splash out here. It does. It can't get, like in alcoholism, alcohol can't, you know, just look at candida. It's a good thing. Candida is like a fungus that grows in people. It grows in a lot of mammals, I think, but it grows in people. It can be the cause of sinus problems, everything else. Candida. It's called the king of something. Yeah? And it desires, its fuel is like sugary fucking, you know, just sugar. Breaking down sugar. So it's in your belly and it wants that sugar. Yeah. Now it can't base its its security on your whims. So it jacks into your head and makes you a dessert lover. Yeah. <laughs> and then you deliver the goods and it's totally disguised because of the selfing. You think you're a great dessert lover or pastry lover when it's basically driven by candida in your intestines. And we're the best vehicles because we think we're doing the driving. We're the best vehicles of power for, for a parasite, especially one you can't see because of the self-centeredness. It's because you're gonna claim to be the doer of shit you're not doing. That you're being compelled to do shit and you'll still fucking own up to that shit. This is the bondage of self. And there's more than candida. This is the first thing when we talked about the parasites. All these people would send me things about natural parasites, the cordyceps, of the cordycep mushroom. Very interesting thing. It has the, the umbrella with the spores, and the spores are the way it's going to reproduce. And that's a pretty chancy thing. It has to have an animal hit it or the wind blow, right? So it bypassed that, and now the spores, through the spores, it's, it's part of the mushroom. It jacks into the ant. It lands on an ant, burrows in, jacks into the ant's brain, and has the ant go where a mushroom would like to grow. Right. And as soon as, the mush, as soon as the ant gets the mushroom spore where it wants to be, it kills the ant, and then the mushroom grows right out of the ant's head. It could take one of us to fucking Mars and we'd have a story. It was me doing it the whole fucking time. It probably can convince the ants for maybe five, 10 yards. Us, we could be fucking, you know, we'd be frequent flyers. If we could be reused, it would reuse. We would just, no matter, no matter how much evidence, we still think it was us doing it. This happens in AA. People have been taken over by something. Obviously, they are compelled to do shit that they would never have come up with. And yet, when all the smoke clears, they think they're the doers. And they're now, shame and guilt is still being produced by that sense of being the doer. 36 years ago, you haven't touched drugs out for over 35 years ago, yet there's a cloud right now of shame and guilt based on you being the doer. There's no fucking convincing you. You go around you. You thinks it's the doer. Go around the you and see the you as not you. And you'll have some relief from doership. You're not going to have relief from doership talking to the doer. You're not going to get it. It's not fucking working. See, you're not that sense of the doer. And you'll get relieved of some of the doership. Seriously, you're not going to. I tried it. And I didn't, I didn't have to go try that much because I saw people try a whole lot more. And I learned from other people that this is fucking doesn't work. <laughs> people who are much more earnest and much more clear and much more devoted than I was ever going to fucking be. And they were still stuck in that fucking mud. Yes. Yeah. I've seen people with 50 years of sobriety and they still have guilt for what they think they did 51 years ago. That to me is not freedom. It isn't so, and I realized: do not talk to the doer about not doing. It. Just talk to what you know. Talk about that, 
to what you are. Do not talk to what you're not about because it's not going to go anywhere. You can make a vow. You can make a vow in a group and think the group will give you more power. I will not be the doer of all that I think I'm doing. No, it's not fun to fucking work. Because the program is before your reaction to the program. And the program is going to overrun the reaction to the program. And actually, the reaction to the program is part of the program. It's a dualistic thing. Part of the program is you're going to try to react to it and resist it and try to get her out of it. And that's verifying you're in it. It's using your ignorance to fortify its idea. All the while you're thinking, it's just, I'm just the one why it's failing. No, it fails. You cannot escape from an imaginary condition. You, do not, you cannot become a non-doer as a doer. There is no doer. There's not non-doership, there's non-doing. Yeah, so this needs to, you got just get clear about it. Why would you want to work on something that can't be undone? Why? You might as well just move on from it. Yeah? There's another way out. This one doesn't work. This way out is in. It's a bigger in. The, the real out is before in and out. Yeah. Yes. Remember, this that seems to be going on is preceded by what's really going on. Yeah. <clears throat> no. Going around the doer. You don't go around the doer. There isn't a doer. You see you're not the doer. Yeah? Yeah. It's not spiritual bypassing. Is that what you were saying? No, no. It's just uh, <coughs> It's, it's, oh, let that imagery in. I've already forgotten whatever. Yes. <laughs> the idea is you don't see you're not the doer from the doer idea. You see you're not the doer from before the doer. Yes? Before the, do, the doer has arisen is you. Yeah? So you see the arising of the doer, and the doer is not before the doing. It comes after the doer. The doing gets claimed to imply the doer. The doer is an afterthought that is now the, the one that's doing the thought. Yes. So this is, it's like time is the magic trick. Yeah. What something is happening and then there's an implying of something from listening to that which is happening. And that which is implied is implied before the implying. So now when people hear the message of selfing, they go to me, hey, I've been selfing all day. They didn't get the message of selfing. The message of selfing is selfing that there's going to be an implying of a self, and then the self is going to call me and tell me they've been selfing all day. That's what it is, yeah? Selfing happening something that comes to a conclusion the conclusion is presupposed before everything and now you're the one that's doing the selfing when that feeling of you is produced by listening to the self yeah yeah so your birth is imaginary you're unborn And if you deal with that was the immaculate conception of the self, yeah? If you start there, it's a losing position. You're going to try to be a non-doer as a doer. You'll become a subtle seeker. Yeah? Mm. Yeah. I just, this is what I've seen. I've seen it in me. And I've seen it in others. I've seen it. I've seen this infection of the claiming of what's going on and having a noun formed out of this imaginary concoction of claiming a verb 
and having the noun suddenly be that which precedes all the verbing when it's obviously an aspect of a verbing to begin with called selfing. It's an imagined noun that now has the most profound position in all of our stories. Everything starts from a noun's point of view. And now things that are happening, we believe we have a lot to do with a lot of shit we have nothing to do with. And there's ownership being taken constantly. And it's not you taking ownership. It's the head taking ownership. And we're not seeing the difference. When the head declares, this is my resentment, you call me and say, I want to talk about my resentments. They're not your resentments. Well, how about... Who's using this message to basically endorse doing whatever I want? Eh? Because it's not me, so that I can do whatever I damn please. It doesn't go. Is it never does. Yeah, so sort of like you're going to go home and do LSC upstairs. You're not going to do shit, honey. You're going to do probably what you do every day. It's a natural discourse. I've heard this in Hamburg. I've heard this every time. Like oh, if I'm not the doer, then I'll be doing LSD. No, you're going to fucking go home and lay on your couch and watch the same TV show, probably. Because you've never been the doer. You see, this idea still holds the essence of doership. You think if I, if the doer finds out it's not doing, then I'm going to do every, anything. No, you're going to probably do exactly what you're doing today. If I didn't smoke marijuana, I would be much more productive. <laughs> you know, I think the way I heard the mess say it is just yeah. try it. If, yeah, just try it. If you oh, exactly. Yes, yes. Yeah. Just try it. Just, just there was an old a Russian book uh, writer that he had a really he had a lot of uh, remorse about his life, so he prayed to God to you know have another life, and he got another life, and he did, did the exact same thing as he did the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, maybe it's that one. Uh, yeah. Video spends <laughs> was a disciple of Porta. There you go. Yeah. I have Amazing. Google here. It's good. Yeah. Just Google her up. <laughs> yes. The incredible life of Ivan Orson. There you go. So the guy bitched, has bitched for a long time, and then he gets a, another chance, does the exact same thing. Because he wasn't the doer to begin with. Don't you see? And then he goes back again. Uh, well, let me just jump into this. The why that reaction was, was exactly a perfect illustration of what the doer would do if it was confronted that he's not or she's not the doer. I would do anything. <laughs> I'll kill people. Yes, this is this fucking advertising campaign to keep you fucking under the covers. Yes, it's perfect. Because I've heard that, hold on a second. I've heard the same answer in Hamburg, in Toronto, in fucking New Jersey, in California, exact same answer. What? If I'm not the doer, I'm just going to lay on a couch all day? That's only coming from the doer fucking idea. Yeah. That's what the doer would think if it wasn't the doer. You see, it's insane. Yeah. So maybe, do you all right, remember so you what? talked about the saran wrap? That was really helpful. Oh, this when, was when it, you, yeah. yeah, really helpful. And just yeah, how much it takes to, to create that. Yeah, well, the saran wrap, you could still be called legally, you know, you have vision, but it's pretty blurred. And this message is just on unwraps that saran wrap because you can see through saran wrap. I mean, you may not be able to really define, but the seeing is going through. But if you start unwinding the saran wrap, obviously things are going to get clearer. Did the things get clearer? No, it's the removal of the saran wrap. Yes. And yeah, and so this process can have that aspect where what was sort of the, the lens or the covering of the lenses are going to be removed and you'll be thinking you're, see, you know, there's more seeing, but there's just seeing more, you know, you have, yeah. yeah. And the condition of There's never condition. been more seeing. There's no more or less in seeing. But you can see more or less here for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a great one, honey, because that's exactly how the, the sense of doership would answer that question. I'm going to do acid when I leave here. I'm going to, if I'm not the doer, I'm going to do acid. All right, tell us after the trip. No one fucking goes out and does acid. 
just you know, you're not, <laughs> you're thinking you'd be liberated from what you do. No, it's all it's just a fucking <laughs> thing. It's not. There's no choice. We're always looking for a possibility of being a chooser. There's no choice. Yeah, you see, you see what's going on, and it, and if you see it with a misunderstanding, it's going to have a lot of potency. And if you see with, with a new understanding, it may weaken. And I feel like it's beneficial if it weakens. Yeah, because the, just like we had a process in recovery where you make amends to people who have you hurt or something in your life. Step nine. And that was one of the most powerful demonstrations because my head had captured me in the past because I had avoided confronting people who I had harmed. And if I had harmed somebody, I'd move to another state, you know, you know what I mean? And so finally I started, I got the balls to go and, you know, meet people who I had done things to and stuff. And it was a very, very liberating because all of that energy that could be, you know, useful now had been in a storage unit of the past, locked up, fucking just like dead space. And then I could feel it rushing in. And I really felt I was the, the you that I am was filling in the life. Finally, it had been so much auctioned off that there was a big vacuum and suddenly it was filled up. It was great. It was a great feeling when I did it. I made all the amends I can yeah. remember. And uh, just my life, my life was like 40% full, so to speak. Yeah. And then, and it was mostly because it was in those storage units of the past at being the doer and not wanting to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I dealt with it as the doer of all of it, knowing that I wasn't the doer of most of it. Mm -hmm. I knew I had been compelled by alcoholism to do the shit I did, but I showed up and I was accountable for what happened and made all the amends. And then, uh, man, this emptiness of space got filled up with something alive. It was cool, very cool. Yeah. So, anyone else? Well, we are compelled by selfishness to do, by self centeredness to do important. Like, like you said, you were compelled by alcoholism to do all kinds of things. We are constantly compelled by self centeredness to do. Yes. But see, things. what happens is when you're compelled by self centeredness, there's a claiming of being the self mm -hmm. <laughs> that is centered. Yeah, you see it? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. self-centeredness <clears throat> does what it does. And it's typical. It's <clears throat> It has certain traits. <clears throat> it leaves a certain trail. Yeah. yeah. And you recognize that. But what a lot of people aren't recognizing is that they're not self. Yeah. So they get a lot of awareness of what they are, but it's not understood through what you're not. Yeah, so they're learning more and more about what they are, just like we used the, the idea of the Enneagram with the Sufism, yeah? There were some teachers in California that were really big on the Enneagram. So I went with a couple of people that were visiting to an Enneagram weekend. Adam Palmer. What's an Enneagram? Well, the, it's a Sufi- Personality uh, model, not yeah. a personality test. Yes, with yeah. subdivisions. So basically <laughs> there's like 27 models of humans, yeah. yeah. Okay, this is making it good. Oh, yeah, so it's called the Enneagram. And it's basically, to me, it's a mental way of describing what you're not, really. So here we are, we are at this big event and people were learning that there are six or nine and this and that. And at the break, with no guidance from the people running it, at the break, everyone came out and they were more identified. I'm a six. I'm a six with a four sexual thing. On and on. They came in, they came out of the, the, the seminar with more self than less because they didn't get the simple warning. And this is a description of what you're not. Yes. So the discard, the cars were described perfectly, but you still walked out of there thinking you are the fucking car. I couldn't believe it. And these were masters, masters sitting there leading the other people. But there was no fucking clarity about the basic point, which is the act of being identified as self. Well, they were busy classifying various personality types. That's what they were doing. 
what's up here. But, but, but the fire God, God is not a personality. But they right. forget God. to say it. it's a personality yeah. tag. It's what you're not. Right, right. They missed it. <laughs> they missed, they missed something. <laughs> they missed yeah. They are. missed the biggest fucking elephant in the room. Yeah. No, they would miss the business if, if yeah. they say yeah. Yeah. The that's that's the. Yeah. Of course, of course, because now yeah. they have follow up. Yeah. seminars oh, about okay. a six with a nine and a four and then they have a matching you know a, a dating group <laughs> so you can match a six with a nine and then a whole fucking yeah a fucking uh business you know okay you're a six you should dress like this yeah. <laughs> You're going to do be much better with a nine that with a four so sexual thing. That is I love to hear that. What is this about? I know. It's incredible. I sat there the whole weekend. I sat there the whole weekend and I observed that people will come out. I'm a six. Or I'm a four. And I said, wait a minute. The information is to lead to I am not a six. I am not a four. You know, but but that process is more about who am I? Actually, they are asking who am I because a six is the peacemaker. It's not just a number. One was the peacemaker. One was the controller. One was the this. Like the numbers came with like characteristics. I'm not. So I'm not blaming the enneagram. I'm, ba I'm well, blaming I how it was presented. Yeah, when it was presented, like people go because like, tell me who am I? Tell exactly, am I? and then you and get go, led to you're I not that. Know, I want to know more about me. Right. Yeah, all right. The more about you is you're not you. But see, the more about you wants to hear more about you. Of course. I'm learning so much about myself. That's what self knowledge is not going to avail you fucking anything. Yeah, that's why there's a business. But it's a good business model, definitely. We found a secret enneagram. There's been nine numbers. <laughs> we mistook the number it's night it's 18 come to the new seminar uh, do you understand we're not talking about the enneagram we're talking about there needs to be a spiritual warning and especially the people who are fucking putting it out there they should say hey listen this was you can use this to see a very clear description of what you're not yes, because yes. you're not a unique you're not like one of a kind car you're a ford you're yeah. a chevy in this they have nine car divisions yes. it says gmc ford chevy jeep shit like that Toyota. you describe you find you one but it's you're not a car yes. <laughs> i would think maybe it's you know whatever well, if you do want to become more familiar with what you're not, it can be useful, but they don't teach it that way. No. It can be they, grateful. It's very useful. Yes, but they don't teach right. it like that. They, they teach yeah. it like Well, here we are. Yes. That's how humble take. Don't you see it? It seems to play itself out. Yeah. Because that would be your one and only. Whatever, whatever. It's fine. All right. Hey. I'm happy to be with all of you. Namaste. Namaste. Yeah. Yes, first there was no mouth. Yes, exactly. See, it isn't like there was a doer and you're going to become a non doer. There was no doing. Yes. See, this is the point of non-duality. It's not driving you to a, a a condition. It's telling you the previous condition. So, based on the previous condition, it's negating the other conditions. And then your approach of massaging and manicuring the other conditions come into question because now you're seeing the before condition or seeing from it. That's all. That's what it's doing. So it's not trying to convince a doer it's not a doer. It's stating a fact that is not a doer. Yeah. And then you describe the doer, which will help that sort of grab you, because obviously you have tons of experiences that you were not the doer. Literally here. Yeah. You do, you take some drug and you're going to do shit you didn't do when you didn't take drugs. Yeah. And you're, you're basically a vehicle that's used for transportation to express something. 
some things take you over. Yet, everything that takes you over has the greatest camouflage because you will call it you. Yeah. yeah. So you'll never see that you're occupied because every effects of the occupation, you, you will call them your effects. This is the bondage of self. Seriously. How are you going to be free? What are you going to be a... Uh, uh, a rehab doer. People have tried that. People who think they were bad try to be virtuous. They're trying to pay a debt. Yeah. And then they're caught in that. And then it becomes a weird thing about having to be perfect that produces a perverseness. And, and or they become righteous and fucking throwing blame on everyone else who isn't doing it the way they're doing it. It doesn't grow well. Yeah, it's like you can see the arthriticness of the misunderstanding and how it's displayed. All right, I was bad and now I'm going to be good. No, I don't. Once it gets into the land of two, uh, yeah, I just lose interest in it. It's a, humbly in my event, I've been thoroughly convinced there's no value in a lot of it. I just don't. There's value in it, but for it, yeah? I just don't see it works. I don't. I've seen it in myself and others, and I just don't see it works. I do not see how you can get out of an imaginary place. And I really believe it's gotten to such a point, there's a drive to get in that which we can't be out of, and a drive to get out of what we can't be in. And if that's if that's in place, what else can fucking appear to be the cart and the horse position? I mean, if it's so fundamentally off there, it can just fucking have a field day. Why? That's the point. False evidence appears real to false evidence. I say this is false evidence. What we are isn't, but the manufacturing and the, and the condition and the way this is built this is false evidence. We're taking that which can be perceived to be the perceiving. That's false evidence. Do you think it's going to have the incredible eye of discrimination <coughs> when it's based on false evidence? I don't believe so. I don't. I don't think all the work in the fucking world can change that. I don't. I don't believe it. Maybe it, do it does all power to them, but I just don't see it. So this way, it's easier. Yeah, you don't try not to be a doer as a doer. You see you're not a doer. <coughs> yeah. And it's obvious, especially for addicts. It's the most obvious <coughs> fucking thing because I did shit that I would never have done under the influence over and over again. And I've never done it since. I'm not under the influence. You're going to tell me I was the doer of that shit? No, something took advantage of this situation and had a field day. And it found a reliable fucking vehicle, me. And it took itself through me to some incredible places and did some incredible shit. Yeah. And uh, I got left holding the bag, so to speak. You know what I mean? It didn't go to jail. I went to jail. It didn't get run over by a car twice. I got run over by a car. You know, seemingly the body. It basically uh, just did all this shit in plain sight. And I didn't know through a lot of, I sat in a lot of meditation and it just never came clear. I didn't. I spent time in Thailand 13 hours a day. It did not become clear. It became clear about through the message of non-duality. It was clear somewhere in me but I don't know if it would have come up or not, but what enticed it to come up was non-duality. So the, here we are. I heard this and something that was there came up. Yeah. So all power and praise to non-duality. That's how I see it, really. I do. Yeah, if, if it was something else, I'd be sharing that praise. I have a lot of praise for recovery. Recovery does goes as far as it can go which is pretty fucking far but it 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 doesn't go back into the being in a way yeah and which is non-duality's 
reign to me. I think non-duality is, you know, if you see the arrow of non-duality, it was shot from before. Yeah, it was. It's not about time. It's coming from some other place. And that's the answer. So just, uh, yeah. It's so funny, Maria, exactly what you said. I heard exact that same thing in Hamburg, Germany. <clears throat> same answer or same uh, response. And also a number of other places, almost exactly similar, or it was the couch or it was acid or something. <clears throat> if I'm not the doer, I'm gonna do anything. But the fact is you haven't done everything and you've not been a doer. But see the fear it has in you? If if I'm not the doer, I'm gonna lose all fucking control or something. It's unbelievable. The advertising campaign for its own survival. It's mind boggling what it does. Something you didn't have in the first place. Yeah. Exactly. It's got you afraid. I'm gonna do I'll kill people. Fucking no, you won't. <laughs> have you oh guess this is the see the idea of being a non-doer is another condition the doer thinks it's going to do itself into. And therefore, it's myopic view of everything is shows itself in that when it, that, it, when it respond, reacts to that message, it's, it's not a doer. The doer programming reacts exactly the same way. I'm going to be fucking out of control. Yeah. So, all right, get back in the, it's like almost like a societal fucking thing to keep the cows behaved or something. <laughs> more, I, was, I was thinking more of the being absolved, absolved of all my sins. Like if you use again this to say, I've never done anything. It wasn't me who. See, but you uh, want to get absolved of all your sins as a sinner. This is the point. The sinner does not want to be absolved from all its sins. It Some says sins. it wants to be. Want. No, the life of the sinner is based on the sin and the remorse of the sin. It it will yap a good story. It does not want to be free because that which is free isn't asking to be free of the sins. That which didn't do it isn't asking not to be free of it. It's only the belief that did it it wants to be free from it as the belief that did it. It doesn't work that way. The sinner doesn't stay the sinner when it's relieved of the sinning. It doesn't stay the sinner. It's not seen as that anymore. I've been a freed sinner. No, it's you see, you were not the sinner to begin with. Yeah. If this is not, I'm a sinner, a sinner, a sinner, and then I'm not a sinner. Or I'm free, as a sinner, freed from the sinning. It's not like that. It's, you're not a sinner. Never were. You never were and you're not. Yeah. Never you see started. that. And then the idea of being free from the sins, you lose interest in that. The only one that wants to be free from the sins is the sinner. You don't know what the spirit's like. The spirit can be okay with shit that you are not okay with as a head. It can be accepting shit that you will never accept or your thinking is impossible to live under. It has peace with it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we're looking yes. at a very small, from a small little speck, yes. trying to sort of riff on the largeness. The largeness displays its largeness, and you see it in awe, A-W-E. You can, your head can never go that way. It doesn't, it doesn't, man. It can practice every fucking dance step, and it will never be able to mimic the dance step of this. Yeah? Yeah. Who really believes as an action figure that your greatest successes are your greatest failures? And yet the person will say they are a devotee of the Course of Miracles. Yet the Course of Miracles says that. Says your greatest successes are your greatest failures. Does your action figure, does the action figure believe that? Probably not. And your greatest failures, your greatest sellers. Now the action figure will use that as a bomb to get to feel a little bit about their greatest failures. <laughs> But it's not changing fucking shit. Literally. Yeah. But if you hear that, the possibility of that being so is quite possible. And we find it in recovery. People yes. think the worst day thing that ever happened is they got stopped by the cops that night. 
Then after a few months of going to AA, they realized they never would have gone to AA unless they had gotten stopped by the cops. So now it's the best thing that ever happened. Yeah, yeah. But remember, the thing that's looking to not be something is the thing that it thinks it is. Same old, same old. This is not loss of interest in all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to out distance myself from being an asset. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm just attempting to live as best I, I can. <laughs> yeah. Right. On. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to ask one thing. All right. Then we got it. What time is it, by the way? Just to see. Because people want to leave. What? Four thirty eight. Oh, we want to leave at five, but go one more, I guess. We leave any time we want, but it's the bus is at five or six. Yeah. What? I have no idea. I don't know where Amelia is. Is she sleeping? Yeah. All right. To continue. Carry on. When there's, when there's clarity that yeah. about not being the doer, oh, yeah. absolute clarity, then even the idea of not being the doer is not necessary anymore, is it? No, it isn't. Yeah. It's necessary if you're sharing yeah. about this message. Yeah, you're not chanting, you're not the doer. If you're not the body, you're not going to listen to that which you're saying it wants to get out of the body. Yeah, you're hearing it, but it's only the body identification that wants to escape from the body. Yes. Can I saw also, it. Yeah. Can we just say a big thank you, Amelia? Thank you. Amelia. Thank you, Amelia.